The governor of Illinois called out Donald Trump in an, in an attempt to fight for the safety and health of his people. Instead, what he says he got was yelled at by a Trump aide. So uh, this is, let me give you the details on what happened and then we'll hear from the governor himself. Uh, so this is what you probably saw on social media over the weekend. O'Hare Airport was a complete and utter disaster as is evidenced by this photo uh, taken by a reporter, Brooke McDonald is her name. This is the scene at O'Hare Airport. Uh, the traveler who took the photo said it's a six hour wait for bags then on to customs for two to four more of waiting in shoulder to shoulder crowds. Police are handing out water and disinfectant wipes as if that's really gonna help a situation mm. like this. Now in response, Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker, Pritzker said the following, the crowds and lines at O'Hara are unacceptable and need to be addressed immediately. Donald Trump and Mike Pence, since this is the only communication medium you pay <laughs> attention to, you need to do something now. These crowds are waiting to get through customs, which is under federal jurisdiction. The federal government needs to get its ish together now. And then he went on cable TV to talk about his experiences with the Trump administration. Let's hear a little bit of what he had to say. What should have happened? They should have increased the Customs and Border Patrol numbers, and they should have increased the number of CDC personnel on the ground doing those checks. They did neither of those. So last night, as people were flooding into O'Hare Airport, they were stuck in a small area, hundreds yeah. and hundreds of people, and that's exactly what you don't want in this pandemic. So we had that problem, and then today, it's going to be even worse. There are a larger number of flights with more people coming, and they seem completely unprepared. So at that point, he's asked by Chuck Todd whether he's gotten any more help. And he says, no, I actually got yelled at. Take a look. So you have not gotten any reassurance um, from, uh, from uh, customs officials that they are going to have more folks on hand today? Well, here's what I got. I got a call at about 11 o'clock last night after that tweet from a White House staffer who yelled at me about the tweet. That is what I got. Now, we've been talking to Customs and Border Patrol officials directly on the ground at O'Hare. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been working with the mayor and our senators to make sure that we're getting the federal government to pay attention to this problem because we can't have it happen all, all day right. today. So you get yelled at for pointing out, and by the way, I think his tweet was proven out. He goes, hey, Trump and Vice President Pence, since this is the only medium you pay attention to, this is where I need to explain something. And look how it worked, <laughs> except that, it worked with yelling. That's it, man. When usually you're like delayed at the airport or they lost your bags, you're just like, at Delta, I'm gonna tweet this for days. <laughs> and someone gets <laughs> yes. back to you. <laughs> right. And they're like, oh my God, we are so sorry. We'll do whatever it takes because we don't want the people searching at Delta right now to see that folks online are mad at them. Instead, yes. when you do the same to Trump, which is all he seems to care about, he doesn't call you. He has someone go call and yell at Pritzker. And Pritzker gets the phone call and it's like, yeah. so what are you gonna do? Right, no, I mean, just the only thing the Trump administration cares about is their image, is Trump's image specifically. Mm -hmm. So they're more upset at Pritzker calling out an issue that the federal government should already be concerned about, right? You're yeah. trying to prevent large gatherings and they have created a situation in which you have giant groups of people huddled together at Customs and Border Patrol at an airport, right? Which if any of those people, if one person in that group has the virus, it is spreading and it's spreading rapidly. This is a disaster and instead of taking personal responsibility, something that the Republican Party claims they care a lot about. They've decided, no, behind the scenes, we're gonna yell at anyone, including government officials who disagree with our approach here. Man, I, and, the, and so let's look at all of the factors that lead to this. Mm -hmm. This is because Trump banned travel yes. to Europe and everybody freaked out and was like, I gotta get home now. So everybody booked their flights and they're going through and the reports is like 13 airports total. So everybody from everywhere in the world has to come back through Chicago O'Hare. I forget what hub that is, but that's one of the major hubs. I think it's United or something. You go through Chicago, you land, and then you have to go get your bag, go to the thing. And the whole time, you've just been on a plane for 12 hours. 
like this. And you and you're like, I absolutely got for 12 hours my I just got COVID from somebody. Maybe it's eight hours when you're flying from Europe. And then you are stand and you're like, oh, at least we'll have social distancing. I've read about that. Then you are cramped together for seven more hours? But don't worry, don't worry. Uh, there are officials from the airport handing out hand sanitizer mm -hmm. and um, you know, some Clorox wipes maybe if you're lucky. You go through the TSA and I don't know if it's TSA and board and customs, but like you have hourly workers there who maybe they're saying we wanna protect the hourly workers. But as we know the federal government's priorities as we reported last week, are not necessarily on the health and safety of those hourly workers because TSA decided, and I know they're probably two different people, but TSA just said we're not going to extend health benefits to hourly workers who are there also touching everybody's everything and then touching the travelers themselves. Jeez. By the way, there's a reason why there's so much distrust in government and it's because of the way they've been handling this. So recently in an NBC News Wall Street Journal poll, uh, respondents were asked about their confidence in the government's handling of coronavirus. When it comes to state governments, uh, the number's pretty high because state governments have uh, sprung into action. They've done a pretty good job. 75% of respondents say that they trust their state government. Local government number is also high, 72%. When it comes to the federal government, you see a significant drop, 62%. But still, majority of the <laughs> majority of the respondents still miraculously believe in the federal government. Then you look at Trump, and the number drops considerably to 48%. And remember what happened in the wake of 9-11. Even moron George Herbert, George Walker Bush was able to take a microphone, mm -hmm. stand among the rubble, and say inspirational human words that had America rally around him in such a way that we then just invaded a random country. Yeah. And People want to believe in their leaders in these times. 48% of America believes in Donald Trump in a time when it would skew for him, but it skews away from him. Yeah. And you know what's so frustrating is that Trump should really, really be good in a time of coronavirus because his one skill is keeping us apart. But he is even failing in that. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.